Hey, what's up guys, David Johnson here. And you know, every year, every photographer wants to become better. They wanna become more creative. They wanna take better photographs overall. And I came up with a list of five things I think every landscape photographer should do in 2021. And, and starting off on the list is, pick up a different technique, a more creative technique. And this can be a lot of different things. This can be a new lens in the field. This can be a new way to photograph with the gear you already have, or this could be something like a post-processing technique that could help you take and produce your vision and, and photography. And you know, one of the things that I've been doing is taking a velvet 56 millimeter F 1.6, 1.8, something like that, lens from lens baby out with me to a lot of the local hikes that i do so many times and i've photographed basically everything i know to do there and i've gone back with this lens and i've really photographed some of the minor details with it and what the velvet does is put this haziness ethereal look around the outside of your subject matter and it's just a totally different approach totally different effect and technique that i've ever done with my nature photography before. And I've really found that it makes me excited about what's out in nature. It makes me a little bit more creative and it makes me view light in a new way when I'm dealing with these really small subjects. So I think picking up new techniques really helps you see things in a different way, but that can also help you take those new found appreciations for smaller details, different techniques, and pull them back into your typical landscape photography shooting, helping you get re-inspired and re-energized about your landscape photography as well. Number two on here, I know I just said I picked up this new lens and that was one of my examples, but limiting your gear. If you look on the shelves behind me, this is all I'm going to use in 2021 to photograph what I'm going to shoot. I don't know what I'm gonna find when I go out there, but I'm not, going to allow myself to buy new pieces of equipment, buy new cameras, buy new gear. Now, if something breaks, I will replace those, but buying something completely different just so I can kind of go out and rely on that piece of gear isn't something that I'm typically used to doing. It's something that I've kind of used as a crutch in the most recent years. And I discovered this by going through a lot of my older photographs and I thought, man, I was a much more creative photographer when I was first getting started. And I think it was because I was using just a prime wide angle lens and a kit 55 to 210 telephoto lens. And it allowed me to see a landscape that had been photographed in so many different ways, but I was limited by my gear and using those two pieces of gear more creatively with what I had really allowed me to appreciate the places that I was going, number one, and also frame them up in a completely different way than I think a lot of people were. And it helped me discover my creative style, helped me discover what I liked and didn't like in landscape photography, and just develop an appreciation for the gear that I did have. So that's why I'm not buying any new pieces of gear, and I'm really limiting myself on that in 2021. I think it's a great idea because I think it does make you a little bit more creative using what you have in the field without using a crutch of purchasing a new piece of equipment. Number three is to draw a three hour drive radius around where you live. Now, I haven't always been the greatest at following this advice that I give people all the time of, hey, if you're struggling getting a lot of photographs, just draw a three hour radius. And I recently did this on Google Earth. I live in a small town in West Tennessee and I know just east of Nashville is about three hours. So I made points all the way around my hometown and everything within that three hour drive radius is something that I could photograph and get back home in one single day. And I think that's what a lot of photographers are missing out on. Yes, three hours there, three hours back. I know that's six hours driving in a whole day, but I've done it plenty in my career and I always love the products that I get and, and the photographs that I get when I do go out to these locations and, and find these things there. Am I worked? Am I so tired by the end of the day I can just like barely keep myself from going to sleep? Yes, but honestly, that's what coffee is for. So I would say make that radius around your hometown and find these different areas, these local places that no one else is photographing. And I think you can really be at an advantage of being more creative as a photographer by doing this without just wishing you were somewhere else photographing. 
Number four is something that I haven't really talked a lot on YouTube about, but I've talked a lot about it on my podcast before, and that's using mindfulness in your landscape photography. Now, yes, mindfulness is a meditation practice that a lot of people use to lower anxiety levels, but also be in the moment and be present. I think that's what's really missing for a lot of landscape photographers right now is just kind of wishing for something that's not really there. My photograph would be so much better if fill in the blank. And I think that's really dangerous for a lot of landscape photographers. You know, when I practice mindfulness, whether that is before I go out in the field actually meditating or just noticing what's going on in the field when I'm there, hearing things, what, what am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I tasting? What am I seeing most importantly? and just going with what is there and using that to create the photograph without wishing and saying, man, if that cloud would just come in this much more or if the wind wasn't blowing this way, really working with what's there is really gonna help you level up your photography when you do go out and shoot and also allow you to just have more fun as a photographer when you do go out and practice. Uh, when you know you may not come back with photograph, but just enjoy the time that you have when you are out. Um, it's something that I've really adopted into not only my landscape photography, but my life is the saying, you know, joy isn't found in a future imagined or a past remembered, but what the moment is right now. And that's really helped me appreciate photography more. It's helped me find joy in what I'm experiencing at the moment. And it's really carried over into my photography too. You can really see that appreciation in a lot of my recent photographs of locations rather than some of the ones from a year, year and a half ago, where maybe even two years where I was doing a lot of wishing and wasn't producing very many photographs. And then number five is, I guess, kind of like a shameless plug here, but it's to learn from other photographers on platforms like podcasts. I have a podcast called The Landscape Photography Show. I'll list that in the video description, and I'll also link it in the comments and pin that to the top so you guys can easily find that. But also uh, one of my good photography buddies, Matt Payne, he has a great podcast called F-Stop Collaborate and Listen. And I think both really shed a light on what YouTube doesn't feature very much with photographers. You know, YouTube is really focused on the technique side and the post-processing side and in-field vlogs, whereas podcasts really get into the mental state of a landscape photographer, why they produce what they do, their style of landscape photography, how they became a landscape photographer, and really their story of their journey in landscape photography. So again, I'll list those in the video description and I'll pin it to the comments to the top. But I really think it's a great way to gain appreciation from a lot of your favorite photographers and also hear why they do what they do, why they take the photographs that they do. And it may give you new vision, new uh, enlightenment, new encouragement, and get excited about landscape photography again. So there you go, those are five things I think every landscape photographer should do in 2021. May you have a blessed and amazing year of photography in 2021, but also in your health, in your happiness, and in this community. I can't wait to see you guys in future videos.